you know you can disable the meeting room yes mm hmm mm hmm wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah assalamu alaikum everyone here in uh, mumkin majlis again so this is probably the third consecutive uh, majlis uh, that we we started yes. on uh, 10th of april right alhamdulillah yeah. Okay, so it's been a third week. So it's good to see you everyone here. Um, uh, welcome again. And this, today, inshallah, we are going to talk about the perfection trap, which does not exist. So let me, let me begin the story with, uh, with my own story. So a long time, long time ago, long, long ago, so I, had, uh, uh, I was obsessed to keep my house clean. This was a time when I was not married and... Uh, so I had an apartment of my own, mashallah, in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, and, uh, it, it was perfect. Perfect in the sense that it was a spotless, it was a spotless clean. Because I was all alone, uh, living all alone. So and uh, so it, the, the obsession of, of cleanliness, cleanliness or keeping the house clean was so much that, that I, I, uh, I uh, used to clean the house in front of my guests. So imagine there's some guests uh, coming in for dinner or something. And if something dropped on the floor, I would just go and uh, bring the brush and I'll start cleaning. So, so one day I, I got a remark from one of my relatives who was visiting me. He said, we, we feel like being at the airport. Means we are here to, to see you, to talk to you, and, and you, are, you are busy cleaning this stuff. So this, uh, this was a very strong message. Although I did not realize at that time, but then another another incident happened of similar sort, and then I realized that uh, what I what am I doing? So I was trying to be perfect, and uh, perfection is is not possible. So I, I would I would like to invite other people over here uh, to uh, to share their stories of perfection. So anyone uh, from the guests, they can open up their mic and uh, uh, and share their stories. We would like this to be a more interactive session than uh, than we. Uh, Speaking all the time. So we have over here a brother Fessel and Sister Sumaya from Australia, and uh, and uh, of course a lot of a lot of guests as well. Kishan for me. So anyone can uh, would like to share for example of uh, perfection. I've got many more to share. Uh, yeah, I can I can share. Um, this is something that I've done um, most of my life, and um, there are many examples. But what I really um, um, hate about it and, and suffered from was the fact that you're never satisfied. Whatever you do in in a job, in a task, in in a personal habit, whatever you achieve, you're not satisfied. You're always looking for something that is more, and that is something that has always kept pressure and not being satisfied with with anything you you do or accomplish. Mm. That's correct. That's correct. So this this kind of perfection. Thank you, Ishan, for your input. So perfection uh, exists in many different shapes. For instance, uh, as you mentioned, whatever that you do at your work, you never get satisfied. Uh, my perfection was in in uh, keeping the house clean, keeping my car clean, so much so that I would not take my car off the road, means in any dirt track or. Uh, any even side side uh, side areas where there's no concrete, I would not take my car. I would go and walk rather. So, like uh, women, for instance, they they would like to have perfect menu in uh, in their parties and dinner. And uh, some of the people, some of the women, they want a spotless clean house and. Different people, like I, I, I know one guy, he wants his body to be perfect. So he spends a lot of time in, in the gym, perfectizing his body from this angle or that angle. So, so one, one time, uh, once I saw this guy uh, giving a camera to uh, one of the cleaners in the gym, asking him to take his pictures in front of mirrors from different angles just to see which one is lo looking good and which one is not looking good and so, so forth. So perfection uh, exists in uh, in different forms. Mm -hmm. So I would like to uh, I would like to uh, to talk a little about how does perfection actually or perfection trap rather uh, starts. So so it, it takes us back a little bit into into the history. Um, 
that some of us, or I would say most of us, have had some experience in our childhood where we were embarrassed or where we were, uh, where we were humiliated or where we were compared with other people, with, uh, with something extraordinary and we were shown that this is what you, what you should have been doing and you have done this. So, so there's a huge difference between what we had done and what we were supposed to be doing. So this, this big gap, it created a feeling of uh, humiliation and embarrassment. You know, feelings give rise to emotions. And uh, this is how we get into something called emotional block. And the emotional block is called perfectionism. So what is the, what is the true sense over here? The true sense or the true uh, real, uh, uh, real uh, uh, what do you may call it, uh, real thing to feel or to become. A real self. Real self is uh, is humility. Real self is uh, the excellence. It means being able to uh, to do the best within the available resources. So, so this is how a little bit of uh, perfection history as to how how it creates. Uh, another uh, possible uh, uh, reason for for perfection trap is uh, the the spotless pictures that we see on. Uh, uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, a perfect moment of breakfast. Wow, a beautiful cup of tea with a with a uh, with a croissant or a croissant or whatever, uh, or sitting next to the beach and having a breakfast and and, and whatnot. Social media is is another uh, big source of creating perfection, uh, of feeling that feeling of perfection, and uh, and many other. Uh, areas. The children, uh, they are they are asked to uh, to do a lot of effort to become perfect in their studies. So th this is the word that we use uh, very often, that we hear very often here and there. So comparison, comparison from something which is unrealistic uh, pushes us to to perfection. So this, generally speaking, these are the few reasons why the drive for perfection is hard. I think uh, so, one uh, one of the reason for this comparison is the competition that is going on, uh, as you just mentioned, like in social media. On social media, people are comparing uh, now uh, to that extent that they are sharing their meal information. That who's uh, who's having a perfect meal, right? And since this competition, it's it's now it's becoming unrealistic because you cannot always have a picture perfect thing. In front of you, you cannot always cook an egg wrong. Okay, sometimes it has to have a, a different shape. So when these unrealistic uh, demands starting to arrive from social media and other sources of information, then uh, you start feeling uh, that you you are missing out on something. So something is not good about what you are having. Rather than looking at the positive side that you you are having something which is uh, better than not having something, you try to compare it with a per perfect picture and then you uh, start feeling uh, sometimes, uh, you start feeling bad and you have, as you mentioned, you have feeling of, let's say if it is about something like, if, if, if it is about house, car, you will have anxiety, you will have some kind of jealousy as well, that why someone has uh, something perfect and I don't have it. Mm. That brings me uh, to another small thing that I would like to share. Uh, that what happens in uh, in case of uh, some some cases that I have seen. Um, uh, mm -hmm. I happen to I happen to see a manager, uh, uh, someone uh, from a, from coaching perspective. So so he used to expect uh, something on a higher side from his team always, and the team would always uh, strive to fulfill his expectations, but they were never. <laughs> ever able to meet his expectations. So what happens is sometimes people, especially of an, uh, of, a, of an elder age, I would rather say, they just forget how they have been, let's say 20 or 30 years back. And they expect that whatever their level of experience and, and whatnot as of now, they expect other people who are, let's say 20 years younger than them to have the same level. So it is not possible. So this happens with uh, not only with managers, this also happens with, with parents. So parents, 
uh, or sometimes monks, they expect uh, uh, their children to be equally good uh, in cooking, let's say, or let's say cleaning the house and, and, and whatnot. Right? So comparison, uh, as it happens. Yeah, yeah, it does happen with mothers and it's very, very common that's happening with mothers because um, especially moms who would like to have their houses clean, um, they expect their kids to be cleaned as well at the same time. So I experienced one of the ladies, she told me her story that um, she was a very um, a sort of like very perfectionist personality. And then whenever her kids would come home, um, she would expect them to put their shoes on place. She would expect them to not to, um, you know, not to my love in the bed sheet or anything. So they, she wanted to have everything very perfect. So one day what happened was like she had a, a very severe injury in her back and she was on bed for a very long time. So, and then after, after some time when she recovered, she asked her son, I think he was in grade nine at that time. And he's, she asked him, like, you must be really unhappy when you come home. Everything is so uh, messed up. And he said, no, mom, I'm very happy when I come home because I can sit on my bed and I can place my shoes anywhere that I want to. And I feel I have all the freedom. So she said, at that time, I realized children do not need that. What children need is comfortable home. They want to have a child-friendly home rather than a place where they have to be, you know, they have to take care all the time that they're not messing up with things. So, yeah, so that was her story. So that really, uh, that was a breakthrough for her. And after that, she said that I changed, that That was a changing time for me. Uh, that was the point that I changed and I, I'm not a perfectionist anymore. Yeah, so that was her story. So it really, it really gives a, us this, a big insight. For I think a, a lot of mothers are perfectionists and then they spend their time and then it leads to a lot of um, issues. They become compulsive at the same time. So they, they want everything on place in, in the right time, in the right, uh, in the right place. If it's not there, then it's a uh, sort of a, they are battling with their kids all the time. So, and they're not mm. giving them space to grow. So, and this is happening and it is a very common thing with mothers, I would say. And uh, another, another problem that, that is arising because of this perfectionism uh, thinking pattern is that uh, people start procrastinating. Uh, this is a common thing that we have seen in coaching that people uh, wait for the perfect moment and all the resources to start with a project or start with a task. So because of the fear of the failure that if we don't have everything from the beginning and if we are not certain about everything from the beginning, we, we will always be end up as a failure. So people don't start their project, they don't start things up. So procrastination is one of the byproduct problem, <laughs> I would say, which happens because of this pattern of thinking. Because they're waiting for the right moment to come and then they will yeah. start. If the right moment yeah. doesn't come, they're not going to start. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does happen. And I, I think it's very common with all of us. Yeah. Hmm. I would like to share something on a different note over here. Uh, Eric Ries uh, in his book, Lean Startup. So he, he is the, the advocate, advocate for, uh, for entrepreneurship and startups and all that. So he says that or something similar in his book. He said that if you have launched something where you did not receive any criticism, you have been too late to launch. So that means launching and, and then learning and improving on the fly is something which is, which is close to human, uh, human instinct. Uh, this is how human beings learn. So, so that's why it is important that we, that, we, uh, uh, that, we, that we start doing whatever that we do, that we want to do, and then improve it on the fly. Right? So I, hope, I hope this clarifies. So I, I would like to invite any one of our guests if they would like to share something or if they would like to uh, to raise any questions to be addressed over here because this is the purpose of this my list. We don't want to be speaking uh, all the time. So if anyone would like to say anything, uh, please uh, go ahead. Uh, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome. You can type your question in the chat window or you can uh, open up your mic and speak up anything uh, that you may like.
we are fine with with the uh, with these all options. Okay. So if uh, uh, if, uh, if nobody is speaking, then let me, add, let me add one one more dimension to this discussion. Please. Uh, we, we as Muslims um, are lucky to have our aqidah right so that we can avoid this uh, perfectionism trap. Uh, if you look at from that perspective, from our, our aqidah perspective, perfection lies only with Allah. So if we try to make things perfect in this world, we are basically uh, doing injustice with ourselves. All our efforts in becoming per perfect or trying to be perfect will go in vain and we will not get the results that we want. So what we should be focusing on in this world is excellence as compared to the to perfection. Excellent idea, my wife. Thank you very much for sharing this. Yes, that's correct. Because Allah SWT is the only one perfect. And uh, and on and Allah's creation, after the taqeem as Allah SWT says, he has, the way he has created human beings. So what we can do is uh, the, do the best within the available resources. Means resources means our time and the effort and the money and the skill that we have do be able to do uh, or to do the best within those available resources. Then, so this brings to another uh, uh, subject, uh, uh, close one. Uh, is that imagine if Allah had kept Jannah as a result of perfect amal, let's suppose, perfect deed. Then, then halas, nobody would have been able to get to the jannah because, uh, uh, because, uh, because our uh, our deeds are not perfect. So that's why, because jannah, whatever we may do, jannah is even higher than uh, than our reach because if if uh, our uh, deeds are to be perfected, so how anyone uh, would get jannah by by the virtue of the rahma of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This is what, what we know as part of our Aqeedah. Uh, is that we will not be able to get Jannah because of our good good, good deeds. No, we will be able to get to Jannah only by the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Rahmah is, is linked to the excellence of uh, excellence of our Amal based on purity of intention. Uh, I think there are a lot of questions. Uh, if someone can read out the questions, uh, Maybe if you're logged in from a PC, if you can read out questions. Yes, I will read the questions. So the first question is about that. Uh, how can I put aside fear if uh, fear of failure, which can drive perfectionism? How you can put aside the fear of failure that drives perfectionism? All right. Okay. So the interesting part about the fear is, is that false expectations appearing real. Uh, well, I don't know whether it is, this is correct or not, but fear is something that you need to look at or, or face head on. And you need to look daringly into the eyes of fear and, uh, and, and challenge its existence. So now when you challenge the fear, when you talk to fear, two things can happen. Either it turns out to be real or it turns out to be false. If it turns out to be false, then there, that means there's no problem. But if it turns out to be reality, where the chances are low, then you need to see what can be done further. For instance, maybe your fear of uh, fear of failure that you mentioned. So, for instance, uh, failure related to being uh, not able to do anything, uh, let's say, uh, maybe failure in exams or, or failure in, in something. Start building your steps. And do, and do the best, and then leave the leave the matter to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because we are we human beings are not able to get the results. Results are from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We are here to put best of our effort, and that's oh, she it. She al she also added that at times she can see that her ideas and thoughts are flawed, and she feel hesitant to put it forward. So this is okay. also perfect. It's like, like what if my ideas and thoughts are flawed, and if I put forward, then I will feel bad after that. So instead of that, instead of speaking, I'll stay quiet. So is everyone. Everyone's ideas are flawed. No one is perfect again. Right? So everyone is coming from his or her point of view. Uh, am, I, am I right? So, so that means if I, my ideas may be stupid, let's suppose. 
So if I if I uh, if I'm afraid that my ideas will be rejected and I don't put forward, it's my own choice. But then how the question is that how you will improve and how you will let the other person or other people know what has been your perspective. So if it's okay that you uh, that you say that, it's in my opinion, uh, in my opinion, this is how I think, or this is what my idea is. And what is your opinion about it? This is fine. Uh, it's uh, and, and let's say be ready for uh, for a little ridiculing or be little English. And let's see how it goes. Did you so try actually, yeah. uh, but uh, I want to add a point here that uh, you should be accepting things as they are. If an idea is a flaw idea and you know it from the beginning, the only way to improve that idea is to take a small step, learn from your failure. If you know that it is a flaw and it's going to fail the first time, but that's all right, because unless you fail, you will never learn and you will never improve on that idea. A flawed idea will remain flawed if it's not acted upon and uh, been rejected multiple times. So whenever you have a rejection or any kind of failure, try to get as much feedback as possible, because that feedback will help you uh, improve your idea, improve your, improve your strategy. And this is how the things are uh, going to improve in your life as well. Excellent idea. Thank you so much for adding. Yeah, that. we're we're also. Uh, so you also. Uh, sorry, uh, Merve. I uh, just wanted to put forward one point here. Uh, when you say that, like you, your ideas are flawed, and you have to talk about it. It it uh, it talks more uh, about self esteem as well, um, because whatever um, my ideal me, uh, if I'm not seeing myself uh, there, so my self esteem goes down there. So if my self-esteem is down, then I'm not confident enough to talk right in front of other people, right? So if someone is saying my ideas are flawed and I'm not able to talk, I'm not able to put my ideas forward, it means that it, it has a lot to do with the self-esteem. Because what the self-esteem goes down when a person cannot see the ideal me uh, in reality, so, and that person, so it means a, like a lot to do with the self-esteem and that person has to work on the self-esteem as well. So it, it goes hand in hand. It, it cannot be, uh, it just cannot be um, one way. Like it's, it just cannot be like a, a, perf a perfect me is to be seen. It's a, it has a lot to do. It talks a lot about self-esteem as well. This is what I think about it. What do you say? Marve, there is another question. Can you take Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a point related to this previous question first. That's if we have time. Yeah, we have some time. Go ahead. Okay. So the, the going back to the question about my idea being flawed. You know, first step is to accept that everything I do will never be perfect because perfection lies only with Allah. So when the, that acceptance comes, then the next question to ask myself is that have I tried my best in my available circumstances? If the answer is yes, then then that's what you need to achieve. That's what excellence is. If not, then obviously you need to try more. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Considering sports, do you think Messi, Ronaldo, Kohli, Babur, Jahangir Khan pursuing perfection? Maybe that's a very interesting question. Uh, I like to comment on that. Okay. Okay. So uh, actually, these uh, these sports uh, men are not pursuing perfection. They are pursuing excellence and continuous improvement on uh, their own self. Their biggest competition because they are top of the line, like Ronaldo, Kohli. They are they are on the top of their game. So their only competition is themselves. Is themselves. So what they do is. They keep on striving for even better self. And uh, as for the Kohli, he said that when he goes to the net practice and he plays every ball like he's playing uh, the actual match, that he's playing the ball in actual match. Uh, same is for the Ronaldo. He never misses a workout. He always, uh, uh, he all, he's actually continuously working out through a, throughout a year, even if the seasons are off. He takes some vacation, but still he remains in the top of his shape because his only competition is himself. So these guys, they are not uh, pursuing perfection. Actually, they are pursuing excellence in what they do 
and they do it by uh, striving for continuous improvement. Uh, anything uh, you want to add nearby? Mm, I think you have uh, you have done a valuable addition here. Um, what I would like to say over here is uh, uh, stop, stop comparing yourself with other people. Accept who you are, and uh, and then do whatever you are, you you can do at your best. And uh, one important thing is uh, that when you and that that you mentioned already earlier is that like, like, uh, when uh, spend some time with yourself and think what other people have been saying about you, and then start improving, and and try to become better in and whatever feedback that we have received from other people. So inshallah, this will help you become better and better and. And let's say match match that thought pattern or or, or expectations of of other people. A lot of times, in uh, in my in my opinion, now I may be wrong here. A lot of times we we hear from people, but we do not act upon their feedback. Why? Because we have been not been able to uh, to spend good amount of time with ourselves, helping ourselves improve the way our stakeholders or people around us want us to become better, right? So let me repeat, let me conclude my point again, uh, that spend some time with yourself, thinking on what is the feedback received from the other people so that you can you can help yourself become better at whatever, whatever that you're doing. So this is one of the important uh, points over here. The other thing is that if you, if you uh, happen to be a perfectionist, or if you feel the other people are perfectionists, see yourself as, are you also falling in, in that category in some other aspect? Maybe are you, uh, let's say, if you criticize other people for being, uh, for being a perfectionist in, in, let's say, cleaning the house or cooking or, or driving and whatnot, uh, what you have been doing, have you been similar in some other aspect? Question yourself. So uh, this will help you uh, again, inshallah. So, uh, uh, important point is self-awareness and improvement, inshallah. So uh, I, I would like to, uh, to bring this uh, towards uh, the concept of, of excellence uh, in Islam. Whenever we, we see the Islamic history as well, uh, the, pro the times of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or even later on, uh, whenever uh, the Muslims were able to, uh, to win the battle battles, uh, we see uh, that in, uh, in most of the situations, uh, they, were not, they were not perfect. They were not even close to their enemy in terms of power, in terms of artillery or weapons and, and whatnot. So, but Allah, Allah gave them the victory based on their sincerity of intentions and uh, being able to do the best of their, uh, their effort and resources. So whether it, it was uh, it was a time of Badr, uh, it was any other incident, you, you can see history repeats, the history is littered with such, such examples. And interestingly, whenever Muslims were very good in terms of perfection, like the uh, so Allah showed them the, the result, Allah made, made them make them learn a lesson. Uh, that that you 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 thought you were greater in numbers. Uh, this is how this is how you end up in because if you if you start thinking about about your Salana, you you're great and and you're outnumbering your enemies, then the, the, then I am here to show my power. So may Allah may Allah subhanahu wa taala protect us from uh, any uh, terrible situations like this. But this is this are uh, what Allah shows us. So Allah says in Quran, "Ahsinu." Ahsinu means that you do your best. Be excellent. In Allah, you have been most mean. And Allah loves people who are who are most mean. Means who, who do their best. All right. So, uh, so we have another question here, bhai, That uh, yeah. isn't excellence uh, is excellence not perfectly using your resources? Excellence is excellently using your resources. Or making the best out of your resources. Yeah. So, so I think the word perfect does not perfect using your resources is not does not fit with excellence. Yes, that's correct. But I would I would say I would say it means excellence means using your resources at an optimum level. That's correct. Within the available time and resources that you have. 
So I, I know someone who, uh, who, who loves to develop PowerPoint presentations, a wonderful presentation. So the amount of time he spent in developing PowerPoint presentations is tremendous. Means uh, uh, he would add effect into that. And of course, it, uh, it does help uh, at the same time. But the point that I'm trying to uh, say is that a lot of time goes into developing PowerPoint presentations, which, which could have been utilized uh, otherwise in, in something even more strategic. This is one thing. The other thing is, that when this, this person gives a presentation, uh, and this is something important to understand, he has developed his PowerPoint presentations in, in such a beautiful uh, way, and, and rather a perfect way, that when he delivers the PowerPoint presentation, he wants to deliver, deliver it perfectly. I mean, he wants to make every point uh, out in his head to be explained to his participants, and he runs over time. So most of the most of the time he is not able to to complete his presentations the way he has developed them, right? So perfection, uh, perfection. The interesting part of perfection is that even if you are, you have become very good in some areas, you start losing in some other area. So you'll find this uh, in people very commonly. So as we are coming close to our uh, session, uh, so let's let's discuss some strategies that what we can do to have uh, to go up with this perfectionism thinking. Mm. So what do you suggest? Yeah, yeah excellent idea. And, uh, let's do that. So I, I would I think like to. Yeah, go ahead. The first and I think the most effective strategy is to accept that as human beings, we are not perfect and we cannot be perfect. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. Except that and uh, uh, second thing I would rather say is spend time with yourself and, uh, and stay mindful. Mindful in the sense that, that keep watching how things are happening around you and uh, what people have been saying about you. So during conversations, we get feedback. And uh, uh, so act upon that feedback and, uh, and try to focus on, on the major few things rather than focusing on too many things together. So take one or two major feedback from people and then act upon this. Start building a small little action in your life. So that, that can help you improve over a period of time gradually. It is not possible that a normal human, no normal human being does not uh, does not become better if there has been some action. Action brings results. So this is the second thing I would uh, I would like to add over here. So first thing, yeah. whereby as you mentioned, that accept that no one is perfect. Second thing, uh, second point is uh, that is stay mindful, uh, take feedback from people, and act in a small little action. I think another strategy could be defining your expectations uh, in a realistic manner. And whenever you are starting a project, yeah, you should define your goals, your expectations in realistic manners, and then you define some constraint of getting to that goal. Like uh, when you have like unlimited, when you put uh, keep things open in terms of time and other resources like money or other things, then you uh, you get into this thinking that you keep on building over the things, even if you are done with it. So it's more uh, more of a gold plating rather than completing the work. Yeah, great. Uh, another great thing I read about it is that uh, don't try to fix what is not broken. So don't sometimes think, yeah, sometimes things are fine as they are. So, but when you uh, strive for perfection, you went into do this uh, gold plating for, and do extra, which does not add any additional value to that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, any more questions? Uh, I feel like get just if you can check the chat window. Do we, do we have any more questions? If not, uh, we don't have any don't. questions. We just have a comment that somebody said, I think perfection is an absolute measure. That's why it's impossible to achieve. While excellence is a relative measure compared to your resources. I, I think That's someone correct. said uh, someone sent a question on Facebook. Could you please repeat and elaborate upon the results are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
Ah, okay. See, our our effort, uh, we we do not know the result. We we are here to put the effort, and the results are to be uh, to be brought by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Let's suppose let's suppose you are uh, you are doing um, excellent effort, and um, uh, excellent means the best of your effort, but things somehow did not work out, and the situation went beyond out of your uh, of your control. So you cannot bring the result. So what you can do is that you have put your Put the best of your effort, but the results are from from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So whether we see it from the historical perspective or from uh, from a, a, a contemporary perspective, you will find it. So if you let's say if you take the times of the Prophet uh, the battlefield or whatever, um, uh, let's say uh, let let's take the example of Ghazbat uh, Abu. Uh, that that was a time for. Uh, uh, for the Muslim army, largest Muslim army at that time to be mobilized, 30,000 people traveling from Medina to Tabuk. Tabuk is like 700 kilometers from Medina. At that time, Prophet asked everyone to contribute whatever that they could. So uh, that, that was the time when the Prophet, uh, when uh, Abu Bakr brought everything uh, from his home, Umar brought half of his stuff. And there was a Sahabi at that time. Who was uh, who was very poor? He worked in a farm of a of a of a, of a Jew, and uh, whatever that he could get was a handful of dates. And then he brought the same to Rasulullah at that time. So what he did is he spread the dates over the over the stuff that was collected. So uh, so coming back to the point, that was that was excellence on his part. He could not do anything uh, beyond that. So so coming back to the point, results are from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Then the army was mobilized and. And and they were ready to fight with the Romans, but the Romans did not show up. So so do you see this? Uh, that they were trying their best, but the situation it was not possible for them to 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 bring Romans out of their home and make them fight. No, uh, they did their best, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had had the reward for them. So coming back to let's say um, <clears throat> take a take another contemporary uh, example. Let's suppose I I am. Uh, uh, working for uh, for let's say promotion, that's about. So I put best of my effort. I put extra time and this and that, and finally the promotion is something which is not in my hand. And finally I don't get promoted. So I had tried to be perfect in here in everything that I do, but I did not get promoted. So what do I do? It shattered all my dreams. So I will feel disappointed, uh, depressed, and and what not. So on the other side, if I had best of my effort, if I had done best of my effort and uh, and put the results in a, and and would believe in the fact that said uh, if I have to get promotion for one of Allah, if it was better for me, Allah will give it for me, give it to me, and I and I do. So if if I did not get the promotion, I'm fine with that. So I hope this clarifies. Yes, are uh, in our hand. Uh, results are not. I hope it does. Another question we have is that what to do if someone defines, okay, another driver for perfectionism is meeting or exceeding people's expectations. What to do if someone defines success as exceeding people's expectations? Let me, let me answer this. So, uh, Hisham, tell me something. Is your definition of success the same as you mentioned here? Yes. Okay, so if the, if the definition of success is to meet or exceed somebody else's expectations, then the definition of success is wrong. And that, that's where you get into the trap of perfectionism. So you, what you need yeah. to do is correct your definition of uh, success first. Okay. And by doing that, you will be out of that trap. Okay, so how does Hicham correct his definition of success? By looking at, looking at success from a... Per, from a from his perspective, not from the perspective of the other person. That's one way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Elaborate a little more, Omega. So when you try to please others, you can never be in a state of uh, fulfillment or in a state of, uh, what do you say, a relax, relaxed state. So you'll always aim for making somebody else happy and you will be in that perfection trap, which will never come. You will, the perfection will never come. And you will be just running after something which you cannot achieve. So if you reverse that process and first reflect with yourself, as you mentioned, that spend time with yourself, reflect with yourself 
do a self reflection that what really success means to you if the if success means pleasing somebody else then you then there's a problem in the core then you need to correct the core first and by doing that self reflection you will arrive at the or you will you will understand or get clarity about the real definition of success and then once you get that you automatically go out of the perfection trap mm-hmm. okay so if if i if i uh, if you allow me to rephrase uh, what you are saying about i is that rather than uh, rather than chasing the expectations of the other person to be fulfilled you ask yourself that did i do the best of my effort was there anything else that i could have done and maybe you can you can ask the other person uh, was there anything else that i could have done here and this will help you get another perspective and this helps you Uh, again to become to increase your level of excellence by doing something which you could have done but you did not do because you did not know about it and now you know because you have asked the other person so this will help you again uh, increase your level of excellence but again you are not chasing uh, the red light of the truck means um, uh, unrealistic expectations but you are doing uh, within uh, within your best of available resources mm-hmm. am i right Yes. So uh, I think I hope you. Yeah. So I think we are uh, running out of time. Um, we so let, can take let, one more one one more question. We can take. Okay. We have two minutes. So what should we do? What should we do when we are afraid to learn from our failures? What I think Co- 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 Coach Somaya, Coach Somaya should answer this. She's been uh, doing a lot of talks on resilience and transformation lately on uh, different forums. So, what she has to say about it? Uh, you are good. Coach Somaya caught me spot on. Okay, uh, resilience. Look, everyone would start have started calling me a resilient coach. <laughs> okay. Um oh uh, what should we do when we are afraid to learn from our failures? All right. I think um when we fail at something um we should consider it as a strength. Um and um because there are a lot of time in our lives that we definitely fail. and um it's not necessarily that we do something and we fail sometimes we fail in our relationships and we sometimes we fail in our exams sometimes we um we fail our driving test for example so but it doesn't mean that that should put us down it should give us a a boost um as if you are um standing on a um diving bo- uh, board and about to um about to jump into the swimming pool so you you slip up high and then you go down so your failure should be actually uh give you momentum uh you you take a dip and then you boom up high uh, with the momentum so your failure should be your strength rather than uh, you being um putting down yourself like i can't move and i have failed uh it should give you more strength So if you look at if you change your perspective and if you start wearing a different glasses and you change your perspective so yeah that failure will become your strength rather than your weakness yeah that's from me if it if you repeat the question if i if i may add like may like to add yeah the question is that what should we do when we are afraid to learn from our failures and we are afraid to learn from our failures all right so my my question to uh, to this question to, to, to this question is that what do you want to do instead if you want to if you are afraid to learn from your failures what is your choice otherwise so that is important to understand because if a child let us suppose if a child uh, uh, who is learning how to walk the child falls down many times and a the child then stands up and starts walking again So if a child is imagine if the child is afraid to learn the lesson from his failure of falling down that means the child should never learn to uh, learn to walk we we all have learned how to write so in in our writing we have made failures we have encountered failures we many of the children they initially when they learn how to write they they make similar b or d uh, the the round side on the left or or right so 
Similarly, we have done mistakes every time. So we have learned in our life. We have learned how to fail many times, and then how, and then learn how to correct it over and again, over and over again. So my question to this person is that if you have, if you have been through this, if you're typing on the internet now, that means you have been through these stages. Then why you are not afraid to learn from your previous lessons? Why you are afraid to learn from your lessons now? What has become different now? So you speak to us uh, later on. And and we can help, uh, inshallah. This is what we are here for. So we can help you learn from your failure, inshallah, and then sign up again and start uh, running again, inshallah. So shall we conclude, my brother? Yes, yes. With this, we can conclude today's uh, session of majlis. Anyone okay. who wants. If you have any other questions, you can directly reach out to us and write to us. We will, inshallah, answer your questions that you have. Feel free to contact okay. us through our website, through our Facebook page. We are available for you. Inshallah. Thank you, everyone uh, over here. Uh, thanks for joining. Inshallah, see you next Saturday again at 1 p.m. Saudi time. Thank you.